In this video, we're going to take our data and we're gonna put that into a separate object. Um, in this case, a scriptable object. Because the idea is that we don't want every monster to be its own prefab, right? Like, cause instead of monster, now we have to have skeleton and then we have to have dragon. We really want the data on the monster to define what the monster is. And it's just a monster, right? Like a skeleton is just because it has a name and it has certain stats. And we want to pull all that from the skeleton data, right? We don't really want this object to be very specific and unique because then, you know, it limits the amount of stuff we can do as we generate it in, into the scene. So what I want to do is I want to take all of this and I want to put it into a separate data object that lives inside of my assets folder. So how do we do this? My solution in this case would be a scriptable object. Let's make a separate script. I want to call this monster data. This is going to define all this stuff up here on the monster. So we're gonna pull all this stuff out of the monster and we're gonna put this into a single smaller object called monster data. And the other thing is I want this to live inside of my assets folder because I may not want my designers poking around at game objects and moving things around, right? They could break something. Uh, we want them to be able to click on a file and put in all their stats and that is fed into the monster up there. So we're gonna open our monster data and the first thing we need to do is we need to derive this from scriptable object. Okay, so we're not attaching this to a game object in the scene. That would be a mono behavior. Instead, we are creating this inside of our project assets. Like we're instantiating little objects inside of our project folder. Uh, that is a scriptable object. Now, one of the advantages of that is that we don't have to worry about scene objects referencing each other. Our data will always exist in our projects folder, so our month our monsters are just looking down here and we don't we don't have to do any kind of scene searching or anything, right? We just plug it in and we're good to go. So scriptable object right here. This is the kind of tedious part. At this point, we need to take all this information right here. We can actually remove this already. We'll take all this information. I'm just gonna cut, go over to monster data and I'm going to paste. Okay, so this is good in theory, right? Like we're taking all that out of here and putting it over here. And the problem is we need to figure out how to create one of these monster data objects. So most commonly you're going to see this, this is the way that you can create a scriptable object. Um, we're going to use a uh, little attribute here. It's called create asset menu, open that up. Uh, we give the file name a default. When we create one, it needs to give it some kind of name. Um, I like to just do something like um, monster data, like this is what it is, and then an underscore, and then we can rename after the underscore. You could come up with an acronym or abbreviation for that if you want to. Now we need to create a button to press inside of our editor window that will create this little object. So let's define where to put that. So menu name. We can group this under something if we want. Let's assume that we have multiple different kinds of units. Like we might have monsters, we might have NPCs, we might have heroes, we might have minions, whatever. I, you know, I don't know. But we're going to do unit data maybe. Then if we do a slash, this will make a subfolder. And then we'll call this monster. Okay, well, so we'll look inside of the unit data and create a monster data. Save that. Uh, we'll save this too, but you know, we're not actually doing anything with that yet. So we'll save all these, come back in here. So if I come over here and I right click on the folder, or you can right click anywhere really. You go to create, I'll see this folder up here that pops up, uh, unit data. You know, we can make different kinds of data. It's just a grouping thing. It's actually optional. Like we could just create monster data and it would pop up right here, but just to show you that you could organize them if you want. We're going to click it. And you'll see it creates a little thing down here called you know the default name and we have all our stats right here so you see it's not really attached to a game object so our designer could come down here and put in all this stuff and say drag and drop like we could reference it just like any other object right like which data do you want to use we drag and drop it in so let's you know underscore let's call this skeleton and the other important thing is that all skeletons will now pull this data to use for that skeleton monster uh, meaning that we're kind of treating this as a configuration file or like a like a setup. We don't really want each skeleton to have its own instance of, uh, you know, so like all skeletons will start with 20 health or something. All skeletons will start with five health. And if we wanted more different types of monsters, we would just create another data, right? Like maybe we have, oops. 
We have a monster data dragon. The tedious part is actually filling in all this information, right? So maybe one thing we probably should have done is give it a default, right? Maybe sometimes this will let us know that we need to give it an actual name. Uh, what's our default chance to drop an item? 20% uh, maybe. What's our range of awareness? We don't know yet. Let's just put in 10. What is our damage by default? One, maybe one, one. Okay, battle cry. Again, placeholder. All right, so just give it some kind of reasonable defaults and you'll see that it doesn't really update, right? Because these are where it's instantiated. So we'll delete these out, we'll make them again. We make the monster data. Okay, now it has our defaults in there. We'll say skeleton. Yeah, we could have just put those values in. It doesn't matter. I'll duplicate that and I'll relabel this one dragon. Basically, I just want two different kinds of monsters here. So uh, we'll call this one dragon, monster type dragon. Call this one skeleton type of undead, right? Like it's the type, not necessarily. So dragon could be like reptile or something if you want. Uh, skeleton. Maybe our dragon hits a little harder, has a little bit more health. Maybe it's not really fast. Oh wait, this is a skeleton. Haha. <laughs> Let's make the skeleton. I don't know. Three, two, two. Yeah. Got a bone. Click with you. I don't know. Just some cheesy thing. <clears throat> um. Yes, but maybe a dragon has a. Huge chance to drop an item, right? But it's very aware of you, hits really hard, has a lot of health. Eh, maybe it's not too fast, but it's just a little little fast. Uh, and then I can I can say something, whatever. All right, so the point is we have two different types of monsters. Now the cool thing is in our monster, if I double click monster, come back in here. So this is all our data, right? We can make as many of these data objects as we want. We can pull the stats from it. But we want this monster to pull from which object, right? We need to tell it an object to pull from. So let's actually leave that open as a variable. Let's say serialized field, private of type monster data, right? That's the type of thing we're looking for. That is our type unrescriptable object. Uh, I'm just gonna call this data. Then if we wanted to see that, if we save this, come back over here, I see it's empty. We'll just drag and drop it in, right? So maybe this monster has a dragon. Right, move that over. Maybe this monster is a type of skeleton, right? Both are monsters, but both are pulling from different data. So this monster, we'll, we'll actually do it this way. We'll say void awake, and we'll say debug.log name. We'll pin to that data dot. So this is kind of tricky. You have to make sure that you're, it's, it's not name, right? Um, and we're already seeing the problem here. Like what if we wanted to print the damage instead. Let's, let's actually do damage. Underscore data dot damage, right? We're, we're not seeing it because for here, this is private. We, we want to be able to see it. So some handy thing that you can do, which is a little tedious, but it is very protected and we can expand on it later if we want is to use uh, public getters for all of these things. So maybe at the bottom I say, okay, I want my name to be able to be seen publicly. So handy little shortcut. All I'm doing here, let me bring this to the top just so you can see it side by side. All right, all I'm doing here is this is private. I can only change it if I do this in the inspector on this object or if I do it inside the script. However, publicly someone else or some other script can access the name and receive the value of this, meaning that they can see it through through this public getter. They can see it, but they can't really change it or modify it in any meaningful way. So we're essentially just redirecting it to the value of name. So they, they can see it, but they can't modify it. It's pretty useful if you wanna like see the dragon's health. Probably don't wanna be able to just change the dragon's health if you're on a separate object. You wanna do that through the proper channels. But this is why this is handy. We're just pointing it to a private variable, allowing access to it without being able to change it. So it's pretty cool, it's pretty handy. And we can do that to our other values too. I'm just going to um, tell you what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it this way. Uh, copy, <clears throat> paste. All right. Uh, 
So I'm just clamping all this down. We're gonna get some errors. It's totally fine. All right. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's fine too. It's fine. That's fine. Okay. So all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to do monster type. Then redirect it to monster type. Again, this is the thing at the top. We're just going through all the variables. We might have some variables that we don't want to expose publicly, right? We need to make sure to put public here. Uh, and we'll just do this one by one. So just for practice, uh, float, chant. It's not change to draw, drop item, right? It's chance to draw. Okay, so we'll say chance to drop item. Chance. And if we realize we, you know, name that incorrectly, we'll double click, right? Click and rename underscore chance to drop item. Enter. Okay, we're going to keep doing this. Active awareness of awareness. Again, it may seem tedious, but the nice thing about this is that if we wanted to do any kind of checking or validating, uh, before we return this, so like maybe we want to ensure that the value is between 0 and 100 before we give you the value, uh, we can do that because we can expand this into a property and we already have it set up. So it gives us a little bit more control. So we're going to do that down here. Int damage. For example, we could make sure that this is greater than 1. Uh, but for now, it's just talking about scriptable objects. So we'll complete that. Again... Just practice your typing speed here. Speed. Speed, okay. Public string battle cry. All right, so everything is pretty protected. We're just using the, we're ensuring that we can only modify this within the inspector window on that object. So the designer can come in and and do all this stuff and, and whatever. And we know that we're not in the game going in and trying to change those values at runtime, right? Like we don't necessarily want to be able to do that. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. But for now, I don't want to mess with it. I want to lock it down, uh, only change from the inspector. However, I do want to see the values. So we're exposing all these things uh, down here. So I have that set up. So now if we go back to our monster right here, we could say, right? So now we could say damage, it's that. Uh, debug.log name. Now remember, like lowercase name is going to be the name of the object, like the game object, or maybe it's the script, I can't remember. But we want to be able to access all these variables inside of data, and now we are allowing ourselves to do that. There's the other cool thing. Maybe we want to do some other things inside the scene. Maybe we want our combat manager to be able to see the speed of all the monsters to determine who goes first, right? So somewhere or another we might want access to each of the monsters data i see the monsters in my scene but I, I don't know what their data is because i can't really read it this is um technically private right private so we're, we're going to do the same thing here we'll say monster data and return data um i just wanted to, oh, monster data uh, monster data oh sorry we'll call this monster data data Right, so I just wanted to show you this handy little shortcut here. Now, if we go into the scene, we can access the monster. We could do like a game object, search for the monster script on it. Once we find it, we can see the monster's health because we can say monster.data.health, right? Like, uh, like technically we could do this dot, uh, data dot health, right? If we were on a different object, that we would say this monster.data.health and we could see it. Anyways, so scriptable objects are kind of neat. It allows us to offload a lot of our data into separate objects. We don't have a lot of duplicates on our prefabs and uh, it's pretty clean, right? Like our monster, we have our collider, we have our monster script and we don't have very many objects in here. So a uh, pretty cool way to handle it. So now that we have that out of the way, we can keep expanding. Uh, we can keep looking at other ways to manipulate our assets and our data as we keep diving deeper into uh, customization and how we can you know, further customize our assets and display them or use them or organize them however we want.